Hi YouTube, how you doing? It's me, Journey Again 6, your middle-aged natural beauty. And I'm coming to you tonight with a video that's actually a follow-up from a video that I made actually a few years ago. Um, the title of that video is called Fibroids, Hysterectomy, Menopause, and Me. I get questions um, regarding that, that topic on a regular basis. So... I thought maybe the best thing for me to do would be to um, answer the main question that I've been getting lately, um, which is about sex after menopause, I'm sorry, after uh, a hysterectomy. Um, I just thought I'd answer that question with a video. So here we go. Uh, first I want to say that after a hysterectomy, there are certain things that are that's still achievable. You can still achieve. Uh, if you still have your cervix, you still can achieve cervical orgasm. And of course, clitoral orgasm has is not affected. So don't worry about not being able to achieve an orgasm after having a hysterectomy. It is still very much achievable. Okay, um, one problem or one issue or concern that a lot of women have is vaginal dryness which nowadays on the market there are so many things for vaginal dryness and not only do they check the dryness they actually enhance the orgasm I haven't tried any of those but I do see that they're out there and you know I, I say hey if, if, if you want to try it try it you know hey you only live once what can I say um let me tell you some things about a hysterectomy <clears throat> that could affect the length of time that your doctor tells you to abstain from sex. If you have your cervix removed, the doctor has to create a vaginal wall, which is called, uh, he calls it a vaginal cuff. And what they do is they bring down a portion of the vaginal wall and they attach it to the bottom of the vagina so that your vi vagina actually is not left like a bottomless pit. So um, when that's done, that area is sutured. So you have stitches, and those stitches require healing. They, they need time to heal. So I would not advise you to um, have sex prior to the six to eight weeks that the doctor says to abstain. Um, <clears throat> If you do have sex and you have had a vaginal cuff created for you, then you run the risk of, first of all, ripping the stitches apart, which will send you right back into surgery, and there you go again with a length of time that you cannot have sex. Um, you can introduce bacteria into the vagina, and then you have these stitches, which are holding together, um, pretty much an incision, then you have infection, which also lengthens your time. You have to go and end up on IV antibiotics for a period of time. So that right there is another risk that you take. Um, you can have clitoral stimulation, only clitoral stimulation. You cannot have oral sex. Oral sex, your mouth is one of your actually most bacteria-filled orifices in your body. So you cannot have oral sex because you introduce bacteria into the area and once again you end up on antibiotics. Um, no anal sex, that is that causes a lot of damage and could cause a perforation which would cause many, many, many major problems and you don't want to deal with that. Um, no anal sex, no oral sex. Um, clitoral stimulation, when I say clitoral stimulation, I mean if you want if you want to use your hand and if you want to masturbate, fine, you can do that. If you want to, if you want to, your man to um, master, you know, to manually um, get you off that's fine um, if <clears throat> if you want to use a vibrator that's fine but nothing inside a vibrator that's gonna just stimulate the clitoral area your clitoris and okay so those are the things that 
that for a woman that has a vaginal wall. And that's one reason the doctor says wait six to eight weeks. For those of us, including myself, that did not have your cervix removed, you still have to wait the allotted amount of time, which is six to eight weeks, because I'm going to try to demonstrate to you with my hand, my arm. Okay, we'll say that this is your, your, um, this is your uterus. And the end of your uterus is your cervix, right? And it's like a, um, it's kind of like, it's the end of it, and it's, we'll say like the end of a baseball bat. And so there's a, there's a, um, kind of like a wall. And then around it, this canal, we'll say this is a vaginal canal, okay? So your uterus, having been, um, cut out you have okay you have all this removed okay so then you still have this top part right here which is the top part of the cervix it requires time to heal if you do not give that time to heal and you go and have sex the biggest um, your biggest complication the biggest risk that you run is a bacterial infection and um, yes, you still could damage the area because it's it's like an open wound that needs to be healed. So you wanna you wanna give yourself time to heal in these situations. Um, sex after hysterectomy is actually, in my opinion, much more enjoyable, and not because um so much because oh i'm not childbearing age anymore and i'm not really thinking about having any more kids is the pain that i was experiencing from the fibroids is gone it's gone so um that's a wonderful thing and it just makes it makes you look forward to enjoying your your mate again so um I hope that answered your question. Uh, in this question, I want to give a shout out to Miss Up North 911. I want to give a shout out to you for actually uh, posing the questions and um, kind of giving me that gentle nudge to go ahead and make another video. So, for all of you that may have any other questions regarding this topic, um, feel free to hit me up if there's any other video that you would like me to do regarding. Um, women's health or, or any any type of health issue or anything, then please feel free to hit me up. And in the meantime, you guys be nice to each other. And like I say at the end of all my videos now, the only goodness in this world is the goodness that we bring to it. So you guys treat each other well. Talk to you later. This is Jernigan Six, your middle-aged natural beauty signing out. Good night.